Hello you three, welcome to video number four. How did you get on with drawing your Roman soldiers yesterday? They had some brilliant pieces of armour, didn't they? Well today our lesson consists of two parts. First we're going to explore the weapons that the Romans used when going into battle. And then after, you will need to pick either a piece of armour or a piece of weaponry that you would like to draw and label today, ready to make tomorrow. So let's start by looking at the weapons that the Romans used. To help us, I'm going to start by showing you some short video clips about the Roman weapons. And then we will look at a short PowerPoint with some other examples in too. 2,000 years ago, the Roman army is the best equipped army in the world. While the architects have mastered the art of manipulating stone and concrete, military engineers have fashioned metal and wood to create devastating weapons of war. The Roman foot soldier's main weapon is a fearsome sword called a gladius, a double-edged blade about 18 inches long with a sharp point. It was used for stabbing and thrusting rather than slashing. But if a sword could be deadly at close quarters, their spear, called a pilum, could kill from a distance. It can be thrown with lethal accuracy around 100 feet. The pilum's designed basically to kill. It's designed to, to pierce people, to pierce armor, to pierce their shields. The pilum has a six foot long wooden shaft topped with a two foot long iron shank. The tip of the shank was triangular and would have been difficult to remove once it impaled the enemy. The drawback of any javelin type weapon is that the enemy may pick it up and throw it back. But Roman military scientists employ the latest metal-making technology to protect their men. The iron tip of the pilum is tempered through rapid heating and cooling, making it hard and strong. The shaft is untempered, leaving it soft. Striking a shield, the pilum's strong tip penetrates, but the soft shaft bends, making it useless for the enemy to throw it back at the Romans. This is the scorpion. It fires iron-tipped bolts. It was used in the first stages of attack and during sieges. It pierces armor and kills instantly. It's a bit like a giant crossbow. The rigid bow arms are cranked back, storing the energy in the two vertical skeins made of rope and sinew. Once the bowstring is released, it fires the arrow 1,200 feet at incredible speeds. This is the bolt. That will be placed here. When I release the bolt, you'll see that the wooden shaft underneath it also projects forward, and that acts very similar to the barrel of a gun, keeping the bolt as straight as possible when it leaves the weapon. As you can see, it's fully maneuverable. I then aim at a target, and when I'm happy to shoot at them, I will. A weapon. The scorpion is of little use in attacking a building. For that, the Romans need something with a bit more punch. The onager and the ballista. I think the stone throwers are the most devastating piece of, of, of Roman technology. These pieces of artillery fire large stones at the enemy. During sieges, they propel projectiles so high into the air that they can break down enemy walls. The whizzing noise of the stones strikes terror into Rome's enemies. To increase the fear factor, they're painted black, so they're harder to see. It's very effective physically, but it's also a huge psychological weapon, um, and enemies whom the Romans are fighting um, are really scared of this stuff. 
The ballista works like the scorpion, but is bigger and more powerful. It can fire a 60-pound stone forward or a three-foot bolt around 1,500 feet, allowing the soldiers to stand well away from enemy archers. The speed of the missile is phenomenal, hitting its target at around 115 miles per hour. Anyone sustaining a direct hit would be killed instantly. The Onager uses a different principle. It catapults basketball-sized stones, weighing up to 50 pounds, nearly a thousand feet, using a single arm and sling. The vertical arm is powered by a large horizontal skein of rope, coiled and twisted to create a rotational force. The skein acts like a spring, storing energy to be released on firing. The more powerful the spring, the more powerful the catapult. Okay, so from the video we saw that the Roman army were very well equipped both with weapons and artillery. And the legionaries were particularly well equipped with a whole range of weapons. They had the gladius, which was their main weapon for fighting, good for close combat, fighting and particularly stabbing. It was lightweight with a steel blade roughly about 50 centimetres long and the hilt or the handle was made from bronze, ivory or wood. They carried this on the right hand side of their belt. On the left hand side of the belt they carried the puglier, which was a short dagger. It had an iron blade and a bronze hilt and was used for stabbing again. The pelium was the long throwing spear, approximately two metres long and the legionaries would have carried two of these that they would have used at the beginning of a battle. The tip of the pugue was made from metal and was a triangular shape and was very difficult to remove from any shield that it impaled. This was attached to a long metal shaft which was soft meaning that it would bend on impact. The bottom of the pugue was made from wood. This was the shank. The legionaries also carried a scooter which is the shield that they used to protect themselves carried on their left hand side. It's made from layers of lightweight wood which were stuck together and covered with a linen or leather and had a metal edge around it to strengthen it. In the middle of the shield you'll see that it has the metal boss which had two purposes, one to protect their hands and two it could be used as a weapon. The Roman army also had archers and they used bows and arrows. The bows were made from wood, bone and horn, with strings made from sinews. And the arrows that they used depended on the opponents that they faced, but were typically made from reed, wood and metal. As long as the weapon, they had several uh, good examples of artillery. The ballista, which was a powerful crossbow, which fired iron tipped bolts 50 metres per second through the air. And these, these bolts could go through armour and cause instant death. The Onager was a giant catapult that they used to throw big heavy things at their enemy and at the enemy's fortresses. It was good for destroying buildings and could attack the enemy from far away, as well as being moved to different places, making it particularly useful. And the Scorpio, also known as the Scorpion. This is a dart thrower style weapon that was easily manoeuvred by one person and was very precise and powerful. Okay, so we've explored the different types of weaponry that the Romans used when going into battle. So on to the day's task. Your task is to choose a piece of armour or a piece of weaponry which you will be making tomorrow and draw a detailed diagram of it. After, you will need to label what it will be made out of. Things like lightweight wood for the um, shield. Um, or a steel blade for the gladius or horsehair for the crest of the centurion's helmet. Now because you are unlikely to have a supply of horsehair if you've chosen to make the helmet or some metal to fashion into a blade you will need to think about how you will actually make it tomorrow. So you will need to then annotate your diagram with what you will use. It might be cardboard, it might be foil, it might be paint for the colour, and so forth. Now to help you, I've had a go of doing some of my own diagrams, which I will show you now. 
Okay, so here is my diagram of the gladius, the double-edged sword used for close combat. And I've drawn a nice big picture to fill the page, a big diagram of it. And I've coloured it how it would look. And I've annotated with what materials the Romans would have used. I've also, for mine, put down some measurements, which will help me when I come to make mine. Now, obviously, like I was saying, I have not got lots of steel in my house to turn into a blade or even the ability to do that myself so I've been thinking about how I will make it. Now my first thought was how was I going to make my sword nice and strong and I thought well actually when I go on my walks I could pick out a nice long stick to put down the middle, a nice strong sturdy one and then I could wrap my cardboard around it to get the shape of the blade afterwards and then to finish it off I was going to cover my cardboard in foil to give it silver effect. I also thought as my stick will come up the top I could then scrunch some newspaper around the handle to give it its shape and if I fasten it, if I stick it with some masking tape then I will still be able to paint it afterwards. Now I've had a go at drawing a diagram for the shield, the scutum 2 and I was thinking uh, the Romans used obviously lots of um, lightweight wood and brass plates which again I've shown all of this in my labels here, but I will not have that in my house. So I'm thinking about what have I got available that I could use. And I think I could use that big cardboard box for my delivery to cut the shield out of. And think about the brass plate is quite raised in all the diagrams. So I was thinking I could scrunch some newspaper behind some another piece of card to give it that raised shape. And again, I could then use my paint to add the decorations in and give it a look like it's got a metal edge if I use a metal colour around there. Now when you come to draw yours think about what you will be able to do in terms of your skills, what is something that you could manage and also think about what have you got available at home. So this task of making it tomorrow should not require you to go out and get lots of things because we need to keep staying safe think about what you've got at home that you can use and what you can adapt for this. So there's your task for today. Choose a piece of armour or a piece of weaponry, a nice big diagram with it, label with what the Romans would have made it out of and then label what you will use instead for yours. Remember to send in any uh, completed uh, diagrams of today's learning into the year three email. We cannot wait to see them. Have fun. Bye.